Let's pray tonight that God will just remember all the needs that he has. And we pray and appeal to God that he will remember all of the needs. The needs, not the wishes and wants, but the needs of, of his people. Praise God. Amen. And Amen. ask God to uh, do something for his church, wherever his church may be gathered together. And we want to pray for families, individuals, for a community here of saints. Let's pray much for one another. Oh, uh, look around if you care to and say, Lord, bless my sister and my brothers in the house with me tonight. And then we want to remember the special request um, that Sister Joyce Crosby, uh, her in Phyllis went up to Georgia to visit a family. And she's up there, they say, with a very severe case of the shingles. And we understand that's very painful. And they're up in Georgia. Phyllis Hunter and Sister Joyce Crosby. Let's remember them tonight. Brother Butch and Sister Carol Del Higa are not back home yet, but see. I want to remember Brother Farias. She's having a medical procedure tomorrow and can't be here tonight. Brother Farias seldom misses a service, and we'll miss him tonight. We pray for him tomorrow in that medical procedure that he will be undertaking. Uh, pray for those on the ground this year that God will do something to touch uh, people that are on the ground. Whether they're out of church tonight because of health reasons or because uh, they're out of church because their work schedule or because they're out of church because they just simply didn't feel like coming in. I, I always pray that everybody on the grounds that lives here on the grounds will especially strive to be in service. Uh, that's just a hallmark with me. As a pastor, I would like to uh, keep before the church, and uh, that's the purpose of these grounds. I want to keep these grounds holy, dedicated to the Lord, and uh, it can't be any other way, not as long as there's breath in my body, as long as I live. I came here when there were no houses here. There were no apartments. There were no places for people to live. No one could live on these grounds when I came here because there was no houses to live in. There was no apartments to live in. There was no parking lot for people to park. Uh, there was no street out there for you to drive on. It was a dirt street. I've been here through the years and I've seen and watched every inch of this progress made to what we have now. And I, I so love the Lord for letting it be yes. and granting yes. what a wonderful, beautiful place we have yes. Yes. here. Yes. From the sanctuary yes. to the school building yes. to the grounds, you never would have to be ashamed yes. to bring a visitor here and say, I want to to my church where I go to church and, and see the grounds where people live. And, and we have school and uh, we eat together, fellowship. You never have to be ashamed of that. So we're going to pray that God will uh, heal Sister Jan Wallace and bring her out uh, out of the uh, bed that she's in for the Wallace's wife. And I know he wants to see that. That's in his spirit. He desires that. Uh, and we desire that. And we desire uh, that any one of these grounds uh, be uh, given to the Lord. And so let's pray. Sister uh, Jan Wallace to the severe affliction that she has. Um, I appreciate all of God's people here tonight and uh, we want to pray for anyone else that maybe let's pray for Sister Lori tonight, the cancer victim of the Gibsonin, the young lady comes here, young woman and uh, she's back home. She was in the hospital uh, but uh, she has to come home for a few days and then she's undertaking chemotherapy again. And uh, she said, Brother Marlowe, I am believing God for my healing. I am not giving up. I am believing God that God will heal me and let me be free from this cancer. And I said, I believe God with you, Sister Lori. And we're going to pray and believe God. Let's remember Brother Terry Harrison and Debbie tonight. Debbie took very ill this afternoon again. 
and a relapse when she go home from her work. And Brother Terry said, Brother Marlowe, please hold us up in prayer. I can't leave her tonight. And uh, then Shannon, Brother Terry Harrison's sister, who came here as a young lady and went away from the church, uh, went away from the Lord's work. But now she has cancer in its most severe stage. And uh, she was taken to the emergency room this evening and given a, uh, emergency oxygen uh, to keep her going. Radiation burned her body like a fire through a forest and uh, looked like uh, someone applied a torch to her body. Radiation, that's one of their cures for cancer. I think sometimes that's not a cure. Uh, that certainly would not be a cure to burn your body uh, like that. And so let's pray for Shannon tonight, Shannon Barfield. And remember uh, Brother McCann, throat surgery, Brother George McCann. Uh, there's cancer on his larynx, on his vocal cords. And uh, wasn't sure he would have a voice uh, when they finished the operation. I haven't heard anything from him since he went into surgery. Maybe some of you have. Uh, but let's pray for Brother George McCann tonight. Yes. Out in, uh, in Texas, Oklahoma, God will be with him and help him. And let's pray for Brother Steve, for the George's father, and ask God to uh, help uh, him, uh, Steve Culbert, tonight. And so there's many other needs, and let's just keep on praying. Dean let's just keep on praying. Dean Harris, uh, Sister Sherry and Dean, facing this problem with his uh, ankle, uh, his uh, leg that was injured in the school board incident, and uh, let's pray that justice will be done for Brother Dean, and that uh, they'll find a way that uh, healing can come, and then Jesus will heal him directly, and then justice will come uh, from the school board, uh, because I believe in justice for people. Right. Sure. And uh, pray these, uh, these uh, things we need to pray about. So we want to pray that God will just uh, keep a great move of God in the church. Praise God. I feel good about the church. I feel good about the progress of the church. I want to thank you all that have been giving so sacrificially in the offerings. Um, and and you, I know that God has touched your heart to do so. And I praise God for all of you praise that have been holding up the, the financial part of the church so so wonderfully, uh, so miraculously. I thank you. I praise God for the workers in the school and the teachers and, and the cleaners and the workers in the church and all of those that keep this place so lovely. Uh, let's keep it lovely with the presence of God also. And let the presence of the Lord be here. Let it be a place where all of God's people can come. Have a heart to reach out yes, yes, for all of yes. God's people. Praise God. Yes. Uh, I'd like to welcome Sister um, Milton back here. Uh, where is she sitting back there in the chair? Is she back there in the chair? Yes. Here, she is. here she is holding up her hands. Sister Milton just started coming back to the church. Yes. And, um, she came here many years ago with her son uh, many years ago and uh, then uh, got away from coming through the years some due to the conditions. Uh, she just recently had her foot amputated and um, uh, she's uh, down here in Braden River, uh, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But she said, I'm near the church again. Hey, and I used to go there. Yeah. And so she called me and I said, Brother Marlowe, uh, could someone pick me up? Well, it was late, and I said, well, yes, I'll go down myself. And I took the car down. It was a great blessing to me uh, to get the wheelchair and bring her out of the home and put her in the car and bring her here. Yes. See, it's not the great things you may think you can do. Oh, man. It, it's what, it, 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 it's the compassion you show. It's the love you show. Yes. It's the care you show. Amen. that people say, give me a ministry, give me a ministry. Well, if you look around in the church, there's ministry all over. Yes, I, but, but it's waiting for you to come and do it. See, the ministry is here in this church. 
There could be a hundred ministries in this church Amen. right here. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. Just just come and do it. Praise God. And so I'm glad to see Sister Milton back on that job. And I appreciate God talking to her heart that to come and be with us again. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't that, isn't that courage when you have to put out the table? Uh, many people would say, I'm just going to stay home. I lost my foot. I lost my leg. I'm going to just stay home. But she said, no, I'm back near the church again. I want to get back to the church. I want to be in the church again. Praise the name of the Lord. She's in room 411 at Braden Care Center. If you want to visit her there. Praise God. And so God is good to us tonight. And we're going to praise him. Let's pray for Brother Ojalas back here. Uh, he's working a deal out. He's taking some time. But his wife is over in West Palm. And uh, she, they're going to be over here. They want to be over here. Let's pray that things will smooth out for us. There will be ways made. Yeah. Doors open for that to happen. So Praise his wife and child yes. can be here in the assembly uh, right along with him. We've got much to pray for. And then tomorrow, Sister Sheila is going to have a memorial service here for Howard, uh, companion Howard Tootin. And um, it'll be at 1 o'clock. You're all invited to come and show care and love. Sister Sheila Cobb sitting down in the middle of the church tonight and the family. And uh, uh, it'll be at 1 o'clock for memorial service right here in the sanctuary. You're invited to come and to show the love of God. If you're free from your work and you can be here, um, Sister Sheila loves the Lord. We love her and we all offer our sympathy and our feelings and our empathy tonight to her loss of her companions. May God bless you, Sheila. Look up. The Lord is with you. And Howard now is in his rest. And you don't have to worry about him anymore. He's at peace. He's not suffering. The oxygen tube is gone. And all the things he had to put up with, he's free now. Free at last. Martin Luther King said, free at last. Uh, thank God Almighty, free at last. Uh, so uh, he's free at last. Praise God, praise God. Brother Adolph. He's not here again. Janie. All right, all right. Uh, let, let's, uh, I, I don't believe the church heard you, Brother Adolf. Would you speak again into the mic there? Yes, I would like uh, to know if the church can remember my daughter, Janie. Uh, she was uh, three months uh, pregnant. She had a miscarriage uh, yesterday. Oh, my. Yes, so. All right, let's remember Janie. My goodness, yes. Uh, pray that she'll be back in this seat right there with you and Amen. right ahead of you again and mom there. Pray that Janie will be there with the rest of the girls and the family. Praise God and pray for her tonight in this loss that she's underwent. All right. Praise God. We'll pray now. We can pray now. Can't we? I believe we're a Holy Ghost church. I'm going to pray. I'm going to leave you alone and I don't know what you're going to do but I'm going to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. And we thank you for the time to pray and the time to gather together in one mind and one accord and to pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, to pray, O oh God, that you might tonight come in and fill the tabernacle with your glory. And Lord, forgive us of any sins. Uh, forgive us of any trespasses. Forgive us, Lord, of for any way that might not be right. And oh, Jesus, and sanctify your people. Uh, take the burden that we can't carry. Take the problems that we're going through. Uh, take, Lord, the load that you have for us to bear. And we pray tonight for the rain of the daughter. And that need there, Jane, that we pray tonight for those in the rest of the nursing home. We pray for Sister Debbie Harris. That we pray for Shannon for the field. We pray, Lord, for the others that may be undergoing trials 
and a God bless God. us, Lord. We pray for Brother Mary and Mary. We pray for Brother Butch and Carol. We pray for the church, for the need marriage. And we pray, oh God, that every need might be met through the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will come into the church and please and get hold of every one here, Lord, and lift every one up and cause the heart to fail. And the heart to sing, and the people of God to rejoice. Oh, we need you tonight. Oh, we need you tonight. Oh, we need you tonight. Oh, we need you tonight, Lord. We pray for Sister Lori, night that cancer will be taken from her body. We pray for Brother George McCann, that cancer will be taken from his body. We pray tonight for the body of Christ and for the church of the living God. We pray for our children and we pray for our family. We pray, Lord, for the church in general that it might go nigh unto thee and go nigh unto the Lamb of God. Oh, we give you the glory and we give you the praise and we give you the praise because we believe there's going to be a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing in it. We believe that there's going to be a stone that out of the mountain without hands. We believe, Lord, that two or three will gather in your name and pray. And we believe that your people, which are called by your name, shall pray and repent, Lord, and turn their face toward God and uh, live themselves in the holiness of God, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We pray, O oh God. We worship you. We pray. We worship, Lord. We worship you. We worship. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Save the lost. Redeem the lost, Lord. Redeem them. Thank you for your people tonight. Thank you for your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone said, Praise the Lord. Amen. Everyone said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Oh, praise God! Hallelujah! You may bring your offering at this time to the offering basket. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory. Oh, 
another man of God, another child of God, welcome tonight, but I'm going to now. Uh, we're so happy to have Mark Matthews first time here. God bless you, Mark. And uh, we're so happy you're here. And we want you to know that we love you. Lives out in Lakewood Ranch. And uh, telling me just in a brief moment of fellowship we had that he's from, uh, he's looking for a good church to go to on Wednesday night. And, and I think he called the office today and inquired, inquired about our service. And, uh, so he said, well, I have no better place I can go than to, to the church. And we thank God he's here tonight. Amen. said I had his roots uh, in the Pilgrim Holiness work and I'm well acquainted with the Pilgrim Holiness people. Um, I, I attended the Pilgrim Holiness Church when I was a young man for a brief period of time and of course they came uh, zealous people at that time when I was among them they were just like Pentecostal people. Yeah. They were on fire. Yeah. I mean, they were sanctified, set apart, and uh, the Pilgrim Holiness people uh, lived godly lives and had zeal of God, loved God, loved the Word, and loved teaching. And, uh, of course, they're an outgrowth of uh, uh, the Nazarene work. They they went away from the Nazarene work. When the Nazarene work became worldly, they fell. And of course, the Nazarenes left the Methodists when well, they became too worldly. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, the Pilgrim Holiness uh, people, uh, dedicated people, used to have a uh, Pilgrim Holiness Church right up here on uh, next to Braden Care Center, uh, the church that's there now. At that time, it was Pilgrim Holiness. And we're glad to have Brother Mark Matthews with us, and as well as all the rest of God's people. Before I get into uh, uh, some comments on the Word of God, uh, uh, I'd like for Haley and Jordan to come up here. Uh, Sister Haley Harris and Jordan. Um, and we we are, uh, th these are two graduates of our school system yes. uh, this year. Haley is in the public school system. Jordan is graduating from the school at he attends. And, uh, we honor our two graduates in this church. Uh, Jordan has accomplished a wonderful, wonderful feat yes. in, uh, in uh, obtaining uh, his graduation papers uh, because he has sought diligently and studied hard and has been a very hard worker to accomplish that. Brother Tom Gulbreth, his grandfather, yes. you can feel very proud of this young man. Plaudits and accomplishments, as I said, for a Sunday night, and um, they'll be graduating. Uh, you, you have graduated already, haven't you? You're, uh, no, it's going to be on the 26th of May. Oh, on the 26th, right. Well, then, uh, you're, you're this Friday night? Uh, this Friday night? Uh, this Friday night, Haley will be graduating. Where, where are they holding the ceremony? Uh, the Convention Center. The Convention Center, across the river. Raiden Convention Center, and will be graduating, uh, and we are very proud of her. And we have two graduates from our Tabernacle Christian School, uh, but they're not here tonight. Uh, but we um, uh, honor each graduate. I want to uh, say that any time you obtain educational degrees, whether it is in high school, college, uh, extracurricular studies, uh, it's an accomplishment, and uh, you can never despise education. Uh, the only person that despises and doesn't honor education is an ignorant person. Uh, that's the only one that never, never does honor education. Uh, but uh, it's an honor to study. It's an honor to be rewarded for your study. And, uh, I congratulate these young people again, Amen. and we'll do more than this for you a little later. All right? God bless you. Let's do it on our hands. Yeah. Um, of all, we're here in our church. Uh, I, I appreciate the church with all of its makeup and its um, many, many parts 
I appreciate the church. Uh, we're going through some scriptures. Um, you can follow me. There's a scripture in Ephesians uh, 3 and 25, verse 25, chapter 3, that is um, uh, always been precious to me. Uh, Unto him be glory in the church. Unto him be glory in the church throughout all ages, uh, world without end. Uh, 21, rather, I said, pardon me for misdirecting you, uh, I said 25. But unto him, unto him be glory, Paul the Apostle said, unto him be glory. And of course, unto Christ should be the intent of every Christian to give glory to Christ yes. unto him. Yes. Now it's impossible to give him glory without giving the Father glory. Amen. Because they're one. They're one. Yes, when one receives glory, the other one receives glory. Amen. And he that honoreth the Son, honoreth the Father. Yep. He that honoreth the Father, honoreth the Son. And unto him, uh, Christ, uh, be glory. Well, where does that glory come from? It comes uh, in the church. Uh, the world cannot give glory to Christ because he is not their king. He is not their savior. He's not their baptizer. I'm talking about the world, the unbeliever. Uh, I term them ungodly, unsaved, unbelieving. Uh, however it is, they cannot give glory to Christ. Uh, if anything, uh, defamation will come out of their mouth. Uh, harsh words, critical words. Uh, Psalms 14 and 1 said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And uh, so we know that the glory of Christ must come from the church. And we must give them more and more glory. We, we, we ministers must teach you. I notice a lot of people do not praise God. You say, well, I do. I do inwardly. What about outwardly? Uh, so I just don't do it outwardly. Why don't you do it outwardly? Uh, you have hands, don't you? The Bible said, clap your hands. Yes. Now, do you do that inwardly? Uh, no, these hands are here. They're outwardly. Uh, clap your hands. So, do you clap your hands? That's a form of praise. That's giving him glory. Um, I notice a lot of people, when we finish the song, they look around, uh, wait for us to sit down, um, and there's no glory, no expressions of praise, but we want to teach the church to give him more and more glory. Amen. Learn to lift your hands. That's a form of praise. Well, oh, I don't have to do that. Yes, you do. The Bible tells us to lift our hands. The Bible tells us to clap our hands. The Bible tells us to praise the Lord with our breath. Uh, let everything that has breath uh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise is a part of victory in the church. And the more you praise Him, the more you praise God. That's right. The more you praise the Lord, uh, the more intent you are in giving God glory and honor and praise that the church grows. The more solid the church is, the church diminishes. Someone said, I, I don't have a very strong voice. Use a weak voice and your voice will get stronger. <laughs> praise God. I don't have very strong arms. But lift your hands and they'll get stronger. Uh, clap your hands and they'll get stronger. You see, because as we magnify God, God magnifies us. As we, as we pay attention to God, God pays attention to us. Uh, Under Him be glory in the church. If you don't learn the art of worship, you will never get your soul free. Amen. Your soul will be in a cage. Amen. You'll come to church 10 years, 15 years, uh, 5 years, 3 years, and you'll be in a cage. You can't get joy. You can't get your soul free. Uh, you can't praise God. Uh, you're locked in. You're locked in to yourself. And what you'll do is this. You'll amuse yourself with something. All during the service, 
you'll abuse yourself by looking, chatting, bringing a cell phone in, turning it on, uh, uh, cutting it on, <laughs> and you'll be talking on the cell phone, uh, and you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be ignoring the preaching, you'll be ignoring praise, because you have to amuse yourself. A human being has to do something with himself. Yes. Uh, they can't sit in a corner and be still. Now you're going to be moving with your body. Now if your body is in worship, you're giving God the praise. Right. Your mind is on God. Amen. And your spirit is tuned in to God. Amen. And you learn uh, to praise Him and worship Him. Uh, the, 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 uh, a, a church that worships God is a victorious church. Amen. Show me a man that will praise God. God. And he'll get the Holy Ghost all over it. Yes, yes. Show Amen. me a woman that will praise God. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will come all over that. Yeah. You cannot start praising God without the Holy Ghost starts moving Amen. in your soul. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let me say that again. Amen. You Amen. cannot start praising the Lord without the Holy Ghost starts moving Amen. in your soul. Amen. Be quiet, and the Holy Ghost will be quiet. That's right. Sit there and say nothing, and the Holy Ghost will say nothing. Uh, have no actions, and the Holy Ghost will have no actions. See, the Holy Ghost gets past the bars of bone uh, and speaks to you, uh, speaks through your soul inwardly. And so uh, that's why the Bible said, "Let everything that hath breath praise the name of the Lord." And Praise him, Psalms 150. Praise him with the sound of the psaltery. Praise him with the heart. Praise him with the trumpet. Praise him with the ten string instrument. Uh, uh, give God praise. A praising church has miracles in it. A praising church has victory. In it. A praising church where people will leave there feeling good like they've been in a rain shower. Did you know a church that will praise God? The people will leave there and that the Spirit of God will be so heavy, they'll feel like they've been in a rain shower. Amen, brother. They'll feel like they've been washed all yes. over. But if they sit silently, they'll freeze up. Their thoughts will freeze up. They'll get grouchy. They'll get grumpy. Uh, they'll go home grumpy. They'll go home. And, and somebody will say, did, did we have a good service tonight? No, it wasn't too good. It wasn't too good. I didn't get much. Did you get very much? No, I didn't get much too much. Uh, well, did you put anything in it? No, didn't put a lot in it. Didn't put a lot in it either. Uh, well, friend, try going down to the bank, don't put anything in it, and more than write a thousand dollar check. You'll have a problem. You better put something in that bank to get something out. Praise our God. I said, you better put something in that bank to get something out. But you can't come in the church and sit for two hours and put nothing in it and get something out of it. All right. Amen. 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 You'll go home and say, I enjoy that. Oh, right. they talk about. I, I tell you that that was that service, I didn't it was bad. It, it, it just I didn't. Did you get something? No, I didn't. Uh, but, but how did you act and react? The whole meeting. What were your thoughts during the whole meeting? Uh, telephone rings, somebody will say, How's the service uh, the other night? Well, it wasn't too good, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, but, see, but, but joy will be in your heart when you allow uh, Christ to just flow through you. Now, there are services, of course, that are not as high as others. And sometimes uh, everybody is not anointed. I'm not anointed sometimes. I, I doubt anybody is anointed uh, so heavily uh, every time they get on their feet. I don't think so. <coughs> uh, it... Um, there's levels of, of um, anointing in the church. There's levels of anointing in teaching. There's levels of anointing in praise. Uh, we won't have the same level of worship in one service as we want. I don't mean that, but I believe wherever God's people are, the Spirit of God is there. Amen. Wherever God's people are, the Holy Ghost comes there. Wherever, and, and, and then there's, everybody doesn't speak <coughs> with the same level of knowledge and understanding. There's teachers that have gone farther than others. There's people that have studied more than others. There's those that have a revelation more than others. Uh, and that's just part of the church. 
Unto him be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Yes. And the Lord is building the church today. Yes, he is. I know in Matthew, the 16th chapter, I want these uh, scriptures on the screen where we can rapidly, uh, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. All right, and the gates of hell will not then prevail against the church. Matthew 16, uh, verse uh, 18. Thank you, Brother Stephen. Thank you, Brother David, back there in the sound and audio and, and the um, uh, moving those things around. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, I don't believe that the church is going to ever be prevailed against. Tested, yes. Tried, yes. The enemy come against it, yes. Satan go about as a roaring lion, uh, seeking you may be devour, yes. But there's a promise in this 18th verse that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Now how is the church built? Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. Now, the rock, of course, is the revelation that he gave Peter. That's right. When Peter received the revelation, that thou art the Christ. Christ. Whom do men say that I, in yeah. verses above this 18th verse, yeah. whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, some said you were Jeremiah, some said you were John the Baptist, some, some said you could have been this one, Elijah, and that one. But he said, but who do you say? that I am that more about this conversation where uh, Peter suddenly stepped up to the plate as a batter does in a baseball game and said and he connected and he connected because the spirit of the Lord gave him that and 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 he said but thou art the Christ the son of the living God and then Jesus Jesus goes on and shows him them and 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 he said uh, and I will give unto thee, verse 19, verse 19 now, because he received this revelation, and I will give unto thee, notice he did not say James and John, and he did not say the rest of them, said, they had the keys of the kingdom too. They didn't have the keys that Peter had. Amen, because Peter is the man that took on the day of Pentecost yes. and unlocked the door of the church yes. to the believers yep. with the keys. Yep. He had the key of the baptism of the Holy oh, Ghost, right. and he had the key of the baptism of water. Yep. Uh, he had those keys, yes, he and he had the keys of repentance. Yes, uh, he was given those keys. Amen. Uh, the understanding, yes. and he unlocked on the day of Pentecost. Yes. Yes. He said, "These men are not drunken as you suppose. As you suppose. Come on. Seeing it's but the third hour of the day, right. saloons are not even open yet. The drinking places are not even." open in Israel yet. It's the third hour of the day. And he said, uh, and, but this is that, but this is this that. Is this is that. And he reached right back over and got that key yes. in Joel, the second chapter, verse 28. 28. And he said, uh, but the, uh, uh, he said, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall come to pass. Yeah. And he was that key that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. And your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men shall bring dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and upon my handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit. Uh, he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shalt thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now that was the key and he gave him and the keys that whatever Peter bound, how would he bind anything? He bound it in the spirit. He bound the spirit of demons and darkness and devils yes. and sin. He bound that. And when he bound it, it was bound in heaven. Amen. When he bound the uh, sickness in the command of the gate called beautiful, silver and gold, have I none? Come on. But such as I have, yes, yes. I give unto thee. Loose. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He just unlocked those lame legs. Right. He unlocked those paralyzed uh, legs yes. of that yes. man. Yes. And he unlocked it. And the man leaped up and began to praise God. Yes. Because Peter 
must give them some keys. I will give them to thee the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever it witness, that, that word bound is, should, should be witnessed. Whatever you witness on earth shall be witnessed in heaven. And, and whatever you uh, uh, loose on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever victory comes on earth, it will be recorded in heaven. God bore witness. Every time there was a healing, a miracle, an anointing, a glory that came in the church, it was bore, uh, uh, God bore witness to that. And so the church um, was built, but it wasn't built then altogether. Uh, let's go over to um, uh, Ephesians 2 and um, look at um, what, what he said um, here in, in, in Ephesians, uh, the second chapter, uh, starting um, uh, verse uh, 18, uh, the second chapter of, of the letter to the church in Ephesus. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Through him. Unto him be glory in the church. And, uh, through him. Unto him be glory in the church. Throughout all ages. That's our church here too. That's the church universal. Uh, throughout all ages. Then and now. Uh, unto him be glory. But he said, uh, he said in verse... 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Verse 19, now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners. You're not Gentiles any longer, but you're fellow citizens yes. with the saints and of the household of God and are built. How are you built now? He said, I'll build my church upon this rock. Well, how is the church built? Uh, are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I taught here on Monday night in the Bible class on Isaiah the 28th chapter, where uh, the class year we shared that, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Is that verse 16 or so, uh, Isaiah 28? Uh, uh, verse, uh, I know it's uh, the 20th chapter, uh, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. For with stammering lips and other tongues, will I speak unto this people. And yet they would not hear. Uh, they didn't hear, even though he spoke to them, with stammering lips, and another tongue will he speak to this people. Did you know that Israel came as close to the baptism of the Holy Ghost as they could be? and yet never accepted it and never received it. Not in the Old Covenant, nor in the New Covenant. All of Israel, only a part of them, only a remnant of them, uh, accepted Isaiah 28 and 10, 11. For precept, the Word of God, prophecy of Christ, prophecy of His coming, prophecy of His Messiahship, prophecy of His life, prophecy of His death, Prophecy of the cross. They didn't accept it. But anyway, the prophets kept giving it. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, uh, Hosea, uh, uh, Joel. For precept must be upon precept. That, that was the law. Uh, had to, did you know, someone said, why do we have to have preaching over and over again? Because you don't get it all the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Because you, you don't get it all the first time. How many times does it take for a man of God to give a lesson until you finally get it? Uh, unless God quickens you. Uh, how, many, how many times does it take for God to let a man of God go over a lesson and you get that lesson? Finally, you get that lesson. How do you know you get a lesson from a man of God? You start putting it into practice. Uh, you, you got it then. If you never put it into practice, you never got it. You may have heard it, but you never got it. You can get a lot of things, but never get it. You can sit for hours, and you're a preacher, but never get it. Never understand it. Ne never get a revelation. Praise our God. Amen. There are people that have heard me over and over again, and, and, and I've had this happen, and let some other preacher come to the church, or some other preacher visit the church, and he'd say the same thing I said, 
for 25 dozen times. And, and yet, uh, someone would say, did you know Brother So-and-So did for the church? And I got that revelation. And I preached it 20 dozen times. But they never got it. They never got it. But thank God they finally got it. Yeah. Praise God, somebody. Somebody, got it. somebody came along that they could get a revelation from. Yeah. Give God the glory, they finally got it. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. But precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and other tongues will I speak to those people. That was the fourth test foretelling prophecy of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right. Now, a remnant is all that ever does finally form the strong church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. So not everybody is built into the church. Uh, a remnant is all that God ever accepts into his kingdom. God never accepts the whole. God never accepts the whole. He leaves some out. He chooses some. He rejects others. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, he said, I, I wound, I kill, I make alive, uh, I form the light, I create darkness. Uh, I, the Lord, do these things. I do the, uh, we give credit to the devil sometimes when God is doing it. Uh, the devil did that. How do you know God's not doing that? Right. See, because uh, uh, because see, God doesn't always uh, always uh, accept everything uh, that people <clears throat> accept. God is peculiar. God is particular. That's why that's why I will never contribute one minute, one dollar, one ounce of my time to building an organized Babylonian church. I will never in my lifetime. I will never do it. I will never build an entertainment church. I will never build a church uh, where you have to curry the favor of people to stay there and live a godly life and a holy life. Uh, you've got to pull tricks and, and uh, you've got to tickle people's ears. Uh, I'll use wisdom. I, I believe in all the wisdom you can use, uh, but, but not, uh, not tickling the ear, uh, not, not causing uh, a person uh, to... Um, hear the gospel just like it is and to receive the gospel and, and to put the gospel into practice because the gospel is all that will save you. And the gospel is all that will save you. Precept must be upon precept. Uh, Isaiah said they wouldn't hear, but precept upon precept and line upon line was to them uh, anyway that they might go and fall backward, be yeah. broken, taken, and snared. That was Israel in their backsliding. A remnant is all that God is really putting together right now Amen. in the church. Amen. God has always brought people out of people, people out of people, movements out of movements. God has always brought a remnant out of the hope, uh, left some behind, carried others on. Uh, he left Cain, he took Abel. He took Enoch, he left Nimrod. Uh, uh, God has always, uh, he took Noah, and he left um, an eight souls, uh, seven with Noah, eight souls all together, and, and he left, how many people died in the Antilodian world? We don't know how many did, uh, but because God didn't take everybody. God isn't going to take everybody now. Uh, it, it's a remnant church that is going to demand holiness again in the church Amen. and righteousness in the church. Amen. It's going to be a remnant that will declare that we cannot do anything but abide by the word of God and the church must return back again to its principles of righteousness and sanctification and holiness and virtue and goodness and charity and honesty Amen. praise our God Amen. the church must go back to go forward someone said I want to see the church go forward well first the church must go back to the principles of the word of God and build again the church on the word of God I'll build the church again on people 
that look peculiar, act peculiar, yes. uh, they are peculiar, they are different, they're, they're, they're not the whole because the whole will never be. Uh, don't, don't ever expect the whole body of believers to be uh, alike in their, in their acceptance of the gospel or in their zeal or in their desire or in their interest or in their uh, hunger, uh, but expect always a part of the church to have victory. All the church will not be defeated at one time. Praise God. There will be a part that will hold up the banner in the midst of war. Praise the name of the Lord. When we're wrestling, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Praise God, there's going to be a remnant that will hold up the banner and the standard of the gospel and the church will be kept pure in that remnant. Praise the name of the Lord. The church must go back to where there's strong elders and strong praise warriors and strong examples in womanhood of godliness and righteousness and virtue. Praise God. And then it must be a victorious church so that when some of the church is wallowing in trying to face defeat, the rest of the church will say, raise the standard and raise the banner. Praise our God and raise the flag of victory up in the church because we are the church. I believe we are the church. Not all of them, of course, have. We're, we're part, we're part, but we're part of all. We're part of the whole. I don't believe we're a, I don't believe we are a, a play world church. We don't, I don't believe we're the children of Israel that sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. I, I don't believe that, uh, the, the, that we have people that don't know what's going on. I believe there's some people that will call light, light, and darkness, darkness, will call good, good, and evil, evil, yes. and the church will not compromise for the sake of saying, we've got a thousand here this Sunday. Well, we'll have a thousand if the Holy Ghost draws them. Amen. Not if we give them a pound of hamburger to come to the church. Praise the name of the Lord. I, 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 believe, I, I believe we'll have a thousand if, if the Holy Ghost anoints them. If the Holy Ghost sends them. If the Holy Ghost speaks to them. Praise the name of the Lord. I, 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 you know the reason I'm here tonight? None of you, none of you, not one of you said, Brother Marlowe, come to church tonight. But the Holy Ghost said to me, Amen. come to the church. Amen. Get to the church. Amen. Get to where you can hear some preaching. Amen. Get to where you can hear somebody shout. Get where you can hear the elders around you. And say praise the Lord. Get there where the saints will say, hallelujah to the put that fire in your soul. Amen. Only God Amen. can cause those feet to move Amen. to the house of God. Amen. Only God Amen. can put you in your place. Yes. Only God Amen. can put a faithful, faithful musician in that chair. Yep. And unless they're sick or on a vacation or a family problem has arisen or there's something that's keeping them out of the church, they will be in that chair beating those drums play that horn and nobody will have to tell them except the Holy Ghost, you're part of the remnant. Amen. You're part of the remnant. Amen. You're not the whole, but you're the remnant. Amen. You're going to be there because you're the remnant. Amen. Because the remnant has to be there whether the whole is or not. Amen. The remnant has to believe God's word whether the whole does or not. Amen. The remnant must give up habits whether the whole does or not. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The remnant must live holy. There has to be some holy women in the church. Amen. Everybody, we can't have, uh, there has to be some holy men in the church. The church, he said, I'll build this upon the rock. rock yeah. Well, did he build everybody on it? No. Did no. everybody get built into the church? No. Did everybody cease to be a foreigner or a stranger and become a fellow citizen and be built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, being the hero of No, they didn't. 
No, it was a remnant. Why did God always take a remnant out of the whole? He just, because God does not take everything that appears before him and say, I, I, I'm going to believe I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. No, if they're not a believer in their heart, if they're not a Christian in their spirit, Indeed. God sees past the That's word. Right. God sees past the outside. God looks on the inside. And God sees what's on the inside. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Aren't you glad we serve a God that's that mighty? Yes, yes. So, so when you look at these scriptures, and we see, and, and, and that only, of, look, let's look at uh, Isaiah, the first chapter. Um, and because see, uh, I'm I'm going to um, I'm going to stand in this pulpit, and I'm going to stand in this church, and I'm going to believe that God is going to send soldiers of the war there uh, to the church of the living God, and that this church is going to be filled up with wise, anointed prayer warriors, teachers, prophets interpretation of tongues, uh, gifts of faith, knowledge, wisdom, uh, discerners, uh, that God is going to fill this place until finally it will overflow with the gifts of God. And every time we come together, there will be a miracle. There will be a revival. There will be a cleansing. There will be a healing. There will be a deliverance. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. What is all that for? Preparing us, preparing us for the coming of the Lord. Preparing us for the coming of Jesus. Praise God. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. Yes. There to sing forever. Yes. Oh, my, 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 my. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Oh, Sister Gloria. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever. All his saving grace. That's right. Praise God. Praise God. So I can't play church. I can't be the ungodly. I can't be those that are not seeking holiness. I can't be those that will not say, Lord, I heal myself, make me, cleanse me, create within me, send me, Lord, put me on the foundation. I don't want to be wish-washy. I don't want to be a play. I want to be part of that remnant, the remnant church, the remnant body. When God uh, destroyed the Andalusian world, the only people that were saved was in that ark. That's right. Did you know God has an ark for every generation? Yes, yes. Noah built that ark, but did you know God's built an ark for every generation? Every generation, every generation's had an ark. Yep. They could have gotten it. The ark is the rock. Yes. The ark is the rock. Right. The, the believing, uh, pattering your life after Christ, uh, rising with Christ, yes. setting your affection on things above. Yes. Praise the name Praise of the Lord. Look at, look at Isaiah. Uh, one here before I get so lengthy that you'll uh, lose a track of what I said to you in the beginning. Uh, but, uh, uh, but look at uh, Isaiah, the first uh, chapter, to see that condition uh, that Israel had gotten himself in. And look what the Lord said uh, concerning Israel. Uh, verse 3, chapter 1. Uh, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. But Israel does not know. And here's a dumbass that knows uh, his master's crib. Here's an ox. Here's an ox. A dumb ox that knows his own. But Israel didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't consider. And I'm convinced that in every generation, that in the church of the living God as it's emerging and becoming a remnant and has become a movement out of the move. Did you know every generation God has had to take a movement out of a movement? Just like Brother Mark there uh, would say, read, read church history. You'll see. 
Here the dear Methodist people, John and Charles Wesley, shook like a leaf in the wind, yes, preaching in the woods of Georgia, down in Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Thousands of people coming to hear the singers, uh, Charles and John and the preachers, and the Methodists, they begin to say, they brought a new method. Those people have a new way. They don't act like the Congregationalists. They don't act like the uh, early uh, church from England did. They don't act like the Church of England. They, they've got, uh, there's something about the, those people, but they've got a new method. Go over there and hear them. Yeah. Go over there and hear John Wesley preach. Uh, go, go hear the man that sets himself on fire at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. and starts to burn at 5. Yeah. And they come to hear him at 6. Yeah. Praise our God. Yeah. Go over there and hear that singer, Charles, anointed like he yeah. is, writing those songs. Praise God. And they went, and, the, and, and history tells us that they would approach the circle, the bush arbor, uh, where John was preaching, and he had no microphone. He had no sound system. They had no sound system. And yet, no, 10,000 people would hear his voice. We begin to preach. Praise God. See, see, the church has almost forgotten that God doesn't need anything artificial. That if God wants you to hear the gospel, he can thunder a man's voice to you. Praise God. God is the greatest amplifier in the world. Yes. We, we, we've gotten so technical, we've gotten so uh, so yes. much hot tech, yes. uh, that, that, that we're almost forgetting that God is going to run this church. Yes. That God yes. is going to restore the church. Yes. That God can command his word. God can command his healing. God can command his spirit and do more in five minutes than an entertainment can do in hours and hours. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I say his spirit. His spirit. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And come into the church. And touch you. And touch you. And touch you. And touch you. Heal the Lord. Praise God. We better get our hands up. We better get the same with all of our hearts. Quit depending on anything, but get your voice to God. Get your hands up to God. Get your heart up to God and say, God, you're the God that can bless me without one instrument, without one thing. You can come down on me and you can make a way for me through the wilderness and you can make a way for me through the Jordan and you can make a way for me through the wilderness and you can make a way for me when all hell is burning around. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Across this United States, uh, the Lord is speaking uh, to people to get away from this stuff we've created and, and get away from this spirit we've created and get away from the words men have created and get away from the attitude that people have brought. Get back to God. Amen, get back to God. Yes. He said the ass doesn't know his crib and knows his crib, brother, and the ox knoweth his owner. That old dumb ox knows the man that owns it. Yes, yes, yes. Praise our God. Yes, yes. And you don't believe that go out in the field where an ox is. And look at the man that hurts him. Look at the man that feeds him. Go out in that field. Come on. I let him blow a horn out of the truck. Come on, come on. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll blow a horn of the truck he drives. Yes. And that ox will come running. Come on. Come on. Who, who told that ox to run toward that truck? Who told that ox to run toward that man with the food? Because that ox knoweth his own. You know where the food is. Yes. And if the church will get your mind right, you'll know where the food is. You'll know where the anointing is. You'll know where the power is. You'll know where the glory is. Praise our God. And let that off. You'll just run the way. You'll just run the way. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll just go toward it. Nobody has to tell you to 
I'm gone. You're gone. Praise God. Because the ox. Because the Lord's ox. For those is my true prayer. I know where I'm fed the word of God. I know some people are trying to feed me tradition, too. I know when they're trying to feed me a story that I can't even believe, too. Praise our God. But look, he said, but Israel doesn't know. They don't consider. They don't. They don't consider, but but they know those animals know. God is going to bring the church back to a remnant. Yes, he is. Right now, God sent you here, Brother Mark. You didn't come here by choice. You came here because God sent you. Yes. Amen. Yes. You picked up that phone call to the office today Amen. because someone, somebody was guiding you yes. besides uh, your flesh. Your fleshly mind didn't do that. That was another mind that did that. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Sister Sherry, the Lord reached out. She yes. told me Monday night, Sister Sherry Walker here, she said, Brother Morrow, I have found more depth in this church. I have found more foundation in this church. And she said, that's the reason I'm here, is because you're trying to get down to the foundation. You're trying to get down to the foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to get down to the foundation. This church here is not going after the world. It's not going to let up. It's not going to let the standards up. We're going to raise our standards. We're going to demand justice and righteousness and holiness and worshiping God in spirit and in truth and loosing the gifts and letting them go and letting the Holy Ghost come in and letting the peculiar God we serve do his peculiar work. Praise God. However he will and through whom he will, I don't care whom God uses. I just want God to use. There's a remnant. I want to be part of that remnant. Yes. Amen. There's a minister. Call me. We're fixing a little apartment for him. He's on the grounds. Uh, he, they'll be ready. He'll be here Monday morning. He says God told him to come here and be with us and to live. I, 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 we'll see. Uh, somebody said, do you know that God said that, Brother Mo? No, he didn't say it to me. He said it to him. Yeah. Praise our God. Yeah. I'm not responsible for what God said to him. That's right. But I'll tell you what I am responsible for. I'm responsible to put him in bed where he can sleep. Come on, I'm responsible come on. to take him in. I'm responsible to tell him I love him. Look. I'm responsible to tell him yeah. that I care about him. Yeah. I'm responsible to tell him that look, this is the house of God. But if God spoke to him, I'm going to say, God, continue to speak. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If God speaks to me, uh, you don't have to speak to me if God speaks to me. God spoke to me. If God speaks to you, hold to it. Don't let somebody tell you to do it if God didn't speak to you. If God spoke to you, all the devils in hell come against you. You tell them God spoke to you. Come on, preach right there. Come on. God said something to you. That's right. God anointed you. Come on, Pastor. God helped you. Come on. It's time the church got bold. Come on. To the Holy Ghost. Verse 4, a sinful nation. 
Isaiah 1 and 4. A sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Does that sound like America? Yeah. I said, does that sound like America? You know it sounds like America. America is a sinful people. A people laden on does it sound like the secular church right now? Of politics? Of men being glamour boys on television? Glamour girls on television? Uh, does it sound like that? Amen. Saying, please send me some money to keep my ministry going. Ain't that right? And you can find out they have a $65 million jet, oh, that's right. personal jet, that uh -huh. they buy for themselves right. to land on their private runway. Yeah. While they're saying, we're going to care for the poor. How in the world could I ride in a $65 million jet yeah. with a private pilot? <laughs> and feel for a poor man that hardly has gas to get to the next town. Right. How in the world can I do it? Amen. Come on. I couldn't do it. No. Neither could no. Jesus no. didn't do it. Come on. If Jesus didn't do it, I can't do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. My ministry has to resemble that of Jesus. Amen. Brother Richard, I just can't have a ministry. I've heard all come and say, I've got a ministry. Yeah. I've got, yeah, they have a ministry. You'll find out they've got a ministry where they're putting thousands in the bank, yeah. buying real estate. Yeah. Uh, and they, they have no compassion for people that are lonely and lost and afraid and hurt. And they'll look down on a man that's been through a struggle in the ministry and want to boot him further down. Yeah. Oh, God, that isn't the ministry of Jesus. That's not the ministry of Christ. I say, Jesus, everywhere he went, he was doing good. He healed the sick. He loosed the lame. He set the captives free. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. My ministry has been known out of Jesus. I just can't tell y'all, i got a ministry. Y'all come here and support it. No, you don't support any man's ministry. That does not show the fruits of Christ. All right. That does not show the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. 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 You can't do it. You can't do it. No, no. It has to, it has to emulate, Brother Michael, the ministry of Jesus. Broken, lonely, lonely. Helping the lost. Going out of his way. Being tired. Going on. Serving the people. I came not to be ministered to, he said, but to minister. Yeah. He was a servant. Praise God. That has to be put back in the remnant. In the remnant church. As well as holiness, as well as modesty, as well as shamefacedness, as, as well as virtue, uh, order, order in the church, order in the ministry, order in the church. Uh, saints have to be taught how to get in order, how to work in order, how to be in order. If you don't be in order, you'll be out of order. You have to be in order. And ministers have to be taught. Not all ministers. I pray for ministers. I don't, I don't ever despise a ministry. Uh, when I hear a minister, um, I pray that if I see that God's trying to give them more, I say, God, give them more. God, help them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I can't, I can't look down on a minister and, and have a ministry myself. I, I can't look down on another minister and have a ministry myself. I've got to pray for that ministry. I've got to pray for those people. Praise the name of the Lord. See, so, so, uh, here, I mean, get, uh, of course, I've um, already made myself, uh, not keep my word with you, but they, they provoke the Holy One of Israel uh, out of anger, they are, no, we're back, oh, God, I'm going to skip some verses here. Uh, and well, verse 6, from the sole of the foot, even under the head, there is no soundness in it, and, and, but wounds and bruises and churchifying sores, that was Israel. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. No healing there. Now, verse 9 is what I want to close with. Except the Lord of hosts had left us or unto us a very small, a very, everybody say, a very small. Very, very, very small. small. Very small. small. Very now, small. Now, I want everybody to get this verse right here. Ex and say it with me. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. But why were they not like some, uh, Sodom and like unto Gomorrah? It was because 
There was a small oh, remnant. Yep. There was a very yes. small remnant. Oh, and there's a very small remnant today. Yep. There's a very small remnant yes. in America. Yes. Yes. All across America, uh, men are building organizations. Yes. And the sad thing is that a few years ago, a lot of people had the revelation on not building an organization, but letting the house of the Lord be built as an organism. Uh, see, this is an organization. Nice, isn't it, to look at? Well designed, isn't it? Carpenters work well done. But come in here tomorrow, and the next day, and a month from now, and see if you see any green branches come out. Come back again, see. See if there's any fruit on this thing. It's as dead as dead can be. That's what men do. They conform God's people. Nice, nice. Nice to their organization, and they build a beautiful organization, but it, it, it becomes dead, there's no life. But an organism is a plant that grows and produces a tree that bears fruit. Christ did not build an organized organization, but he built an organized organism. Praise God. It had structure, it had order, but it was an organism. I said it had structure, it had order, but it was an organism. It was producing fruit. It was producing growth. Praise our God. Praise God. Praise our God. Praise our God. Praise our God. Sister Joan, I'll use you, you for the day. You've come uh, last year, year and a half, two years, and blessed us and become a part of uh, the love of God in us and us in you. And you've added. You know why you've added? Because, not because I'm saying it, because I could stand here and give you all the plaudits in the world, and, and, and God, if God's not in it, wouldn't be in it. But I'm not you that. Why have you added it? Because you're not an organized person dead in your spirit, just carrying out some rules of religion. But you're living a life. Amen. You're living a Christian life. Yeah. You're an example. You're an example. Mr. John, you're an example. Brother Dale, you're an example. Absolutely. And I could go here and say, uh, Sister Wanda, I'll take Sister Wanda's show. How many years have you been sitting over there in that floor? 35? 35 years been sitting right there, looking right at me. She's a living plant. She's bearing some fruit. That woman will help you. She'll love you. Praise God. She's producing fruit. See, it's an organized organism. The body of Christ is. Praise God. Now, you start producing fruit in your chair. I'm going to go over there and see if you've got any apples growing or pears or peaches or whatever. Praise God. We, this, this should be a very fruitful tree. Very fruitful tree. This is that. Bear some fruit. Bear some fruit. Bear some fruit. Bear some fruit. Pray. Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. See, but we're not going to be like Sodom, the world, Gomorrah, like the world, because we are going to hunt God's word. We're going to study God's word. We're going to study the anointing. We're going to call out. We're going to plead. We're going to plead the blood. We're going to plead the blood again and again and again. We're not going to be satisfied. Come in here and say, we just came in and had a service. We're going to hunt the will of God. Hunt the will of God. Hunt the anointing. Hunt the wisdom of God. Let, the, let, let, let God's word reveal himself through you. Praise God. And because uh, the church is not ever going to be the whole, it's going to be a remnant. And God is gathering the remnant together. And when this minister called me and said, Brother Marlowe, um, I feel led of the Lord. I've got invitations to go several places. He's a pastor, and he's been a pastor many years. He said, I could go many places, but the Holy Ghost said, you go to Bradenton. And you sit in that church, and you see what my will is for you. First of all, I'm going to do a great work in Bradenton, Florida. Now, God said that to him. God. Somebody said, did he say it to you, Brother Marlowe? Well, he said it to me, but in different words. But he said it to him in those words. Praise our God. So there must be a stirring in the mulberry tree. And when they heard that rustling in the mulberry tree, they got their swords ready and ready to go to war, didn't they? All right, everybody over the assembly, find your sword, find what God wants you to do, get in your place, do what God tells you, and we'll have a great church here filled with revival. And filled with fire. Everybody said amen and praise the Lord. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen and praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How can we put the icing on the cake right here? Uh, how can we do it? Praise God. Praise God. Uh, you know. Praise uh, God. You know, how can we do it? Well, we can do it we're by praising Him. We can do it by believing God for a special. And this is what I feel to do. I, I'm going to ask you to believe God for a special anointing in your life to free any shackle, yes, seen or unseen, in your life, child of God, ministers. And I'm going to ask God to firm this ministry up. I'm going to ask God to firm this ministry. Yes, sir. Bring it to a firmness we've never known. Never Praise God. I'm going to ask God to bless this church with holiness and righteousness and truthfulness and justice and humility and love and revelations until this place is so alive you just can't sit there without speaking in other tongues praising God. Oh, glory. Praise God. Writing books, praise God. Getting revelations from God. You'll be so excited you'll say, let's get back to church. Oh my God, is what is this, Tuesday? Yeah. Well, Wednesday. okay, I gotta get to Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Get to Praise God. All right, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's good evening. Sister Marla? Mr. the way Come on up here. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm gonna say. No, you're gonna say something. <laughs> Praise God. How many believe that tomorrow can preach? Yeah. 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 How many believe this woman, when she talks, she says something you want to hear? Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 I believe she does. Yeah. I believe she does. Yeah. I don't know what God's going to tell you to say, but, okay, I'll say but, but you should say something. Amen. Put the icing on the cake. I mentioned a few weeks ago that the, I'd been reading in the book of Acts and it said, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you will receive power. And when we have the Holy Ghost upon us, we have power. I was thinking this week, it's just been going over and over in me and I thought, you know, when you have, thank you. Sure. Uh, when you have, um, when you have power, When we, we receive the Holy Ghost and we're on this earth and we start a journey with the Lord and we go uh, in some valleys and we go on mountaintops, but the Lord never intended for us to stay in the valley. The Bible said he's the lily of the valley, but that is where he lives. He lives on the mountaintop, and that's where we should be. And I, I thought I can tonight, the scripture in... Um, Psalms, it said, you know, in uh, the book, in the New Testament, it said, many are called and few are chosen. And in the book of uh, uh, Psalms 65 and 4, it said, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causeth to approach unto him. I'm reading from there. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causeth to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We yes. shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. And in Psalms 4 and 3 it said, Come on. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear him, will hear when I call unto him. And aren't you glad that the Lord chose you? Yes, yes. Are you glad the Lord chose you? Aren't you glad he chose you? But he chose us, and I'm thankful for the message tonight. And I wanted that to be incorporated in my life. And every day I want to, I, you know, the, the, the Lord is so amazing. You know, uh, as some of you know, I was the youngest of 14 children. And my mother was a tremendous person. And on her left hand, on her thumb, her nail split. Did you know on my left hand, on my thumb, my nail splits? Uh, Isn't that's that a, ironic? That's you see, what my, was in my mother has been passed on to me. 
And what is in Jesus, I want it passed on to this spiritual person. And I met before him. The Lord, the Lord dealt with my heart about stirring up these gifts in the church. <clears throat> and I'm looking at all of you. And there's ministry all over this house. And we, we need to stir that ministry up. Sister Marlo has a ministry that she's always just sat there and sang and sang. So I believe there's more uh, to our gifts than we're stirring up. I say let's start stirring up our gifts. And you, you brethren, there is, there's a gift to you and let the Holy Ghost stir that and get into it. And you, you young people, uh, stir the gift up. You're just coming into the church. Stir the gift up. Because the church, it, when, when the gifts stir up, the blessings come in. Amen. And the church is lifted up. Yes. Praise our God. Amen. And you'll know when the gift is working because oh, yeah. you'll just know you've run out. And the gift says, stop. Praise God. You'll start again. And the gifts hurt itself. Praise, Praise, Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 So tomorrow's going to say, Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God.